Hello, everybody. I'm Dorothy, professional astrologer. You can find me right here, nhastrologer.com. You know, there's a lot of videos out there now about this upcoming eclipse on December 14th. And of course, the solstice and the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. And all those are very important events. Gather that information. But what I want to talk about right now, and I'm going to add to that mix of all the people who have, are going to talk about all of those things. I don't want us to forget about this week coming up, December 7th to December 13th. We look, lots of times we look too far ahead too fast, right? It's great to have this information, but I just want to bring you back to the present moment. And I'm even, I'm videoing this weekly on my normal day, Thursday before the week that I post it. So this will get up on December 3rd. But the point is, we have to remember not to keep looking so far ahead that we forget about what's going on right now. And that's my main, main purpose, why, what I'm going to do for this week. And in, in another few days, I'll have the eclipse up. But right now, focus and make notes and get your calendar out and make sure you write down some of the important things that we can be doing in this time period. If we truly want to be authentically in alignment with the astrology, it's great to know what's coming, but let's pay attention to the day that we're in as well. You can read the forecast right here at nhastrologer.com or just get on my email list and I will send you that. I send a newsletter out once a week, sometimes once every 10 days. I'm not a massive marketer. You won't get automated emails at all from me, but you do have to reply when you first sign up. That's it. So let's get started. I know I just spent a minute and a half on that, but the thing is I really want us to focus on this week. So comment, like, and share with your groups and I would appreciate that. Now, on December 7th and into the 8th, so all day, both of those days, Monday and Tuesday, that moon's in Virgo. So what does that mean? Of course, it makes every aspect to all the planets, since it makes its whole wrap around each sign, right? We have this opportunity with that moon in Virgo to, to slow down, but to, to be more grounded. Pay attention to what's going on. We're in the, the final quarter of the lunar cycle. And we'll be in the balsamic phase soon. I'll talk about that in a minute. But we're in this phase where we're in the waning phase, the moon in Virgo, earthy, grounded, focused on details. Let's do that. Let's pay attention to that. Now, in, on Monday, of course, it's going to square Sag planets opposite Neptune which is not a problem. These are mutable aspects. I think the mutable aspects, whether they're oppositions or squares are easy, just as a minor adjustment, you can get into alignment, right? Virgo also represents our uh, health, our know, wellness. So one of the things I think about with this is that if you're a person who, actually in any, any way that you use medicine, but to me, Virgo represents holistic medicine, and herbal medicines. So tinctures and things like that, because it's very earthy, very grounded. So if you are interested in those types of things, this is a good week, Monday and Tuesday is a good opportunity. Just go stock up on stuff so you know that you're going to have what you need for this long winter that's ahead of us. The way things are going, we're not getting out of this quickly. So we're going to be needing, we're going to be spending more time at home, just like we did last spring winter and spring. And it is what it is. I'm not telling you stuff you don't know, but let's use this Virgo energy in a productive way. Pick up your vitamin C, pick up your herbal remedies, get really good healthy foods, work with your immune system. That's all Virgo related. So we have these opportunities to do that. The Virgo moon also trines the Capricorn planets. This is the last trine between when the, from the moon in this sign to the Capricorn planets because Jupiter and Saturn are moving into Aquarius in a little over a week from now. So whatever projects, Virgo is again, that detailed focus, the things I want to do or can do or should do every day, that to-do list, right? Well, look at it. You know, they've been, um, Jupiter's been in Capricorn for 13 months, Saturn almost three years. It's two and a half because he sneaks in and then he goes back out. He always does that in the beginning of the sign and then he comes back in. So two and a half years in the sign. So the moon's been making this trine aspect multiple times 
right? Once a month. But this is the final one. Saturn and Jupiter are at the end of the zodiac sign of Capricorn. Saturn especially is at 29. Jupiter right now is about 27. Actually, let me look at my chart. I can't quite remember. Um, yes, it is at 27. So we have this opportunity here to really finalize something that we may have started 13 months ago or even two and a half years ago. Just with that little quick push from the moon on Monday and Tuesday. So I know that's a lot of information for just two days and everybody's focusing on the eclipse. I get it. We're in between eclipses. Right now, it's finalizing things, finishing things up, tidying up all of the things that we need to tidy up before we get to that eclipse. We need to clear the deck. We need to have less things on our plate. So I'm looking at the moon this week in, the, in that regard. So let's move on to, um, let me grab my notes. I want to make sure I'm going to talk about everything here. Let me move on to um, what's next. So I have... On Wednesday the 9th, let me get back to this. Wednesday the 9th, we have the moon entering, actually late uh, Tuesday night, the 8th, the moon goes into Libra. So the moon will be in Libra for just over two days right now. And in Libra on Monday, the, on, on Wednesday, I'm misspeaking, I'm talking too fast, I'll slow down now. On Wednesday the 9th and Thursday the 10th. And you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just go to the little cog and you can slow me down or speed me up. I watch a lot of videos on a higher speed. Some people speak too slow for me. <laughs> I know I speak too fast for some. All right, back to this. On Monday and Tuesday with the moon in Libra, of course, she's going to connect with all the planets in the time that she's in that sign, of course, in every way, every aspect. But the thing is, it's like we're looking for that balance in our life. I mean, or am I doing too much? Are you doing too much? Do I need from you? Do you need from me? The total balance, the scales of this Libra energy is so strong right now. And again, in this waxing, uh, this waning lunar phase, it's representing, you know, our partnerships and relationships and who we're interacting with right now. I'm just interacting with the camera. So <laughs> there's nobody on the other side of that right now. The thing is, it's like, how does that work out for you? Look at those partnerships and relationships, and they'll be dynamic at this point in time. The moon will make a square to the Capricorn planets, of course. And so what does that represent? That means adjustments. Again, make some adjustments. We're here to do that. We're here to learn. The square energies are about you know, moving and shifting, you know, taking the challenges that come to us so we can then, you know, meet those challenges and then we feel accomplished and like we've achieved something and even learning our lessons. It's really important that we use the squares and the oppositions for recognition and for, you know, realizing how much we've done and how much growth we have. And growth doesn't happen just in a void. We need things that help us and challenge us that make us grow. And that's the energy that we have on Tuesday and Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday, right? Now, as of Friday, December 11th, 5.30 a.m. Eastern time zone, the moon, once the moon gets, it's in Scorpio now. So once the moon gets to five degrees of Scorpio, it's in the balsamic lunar phase. Now, really important. It's going to be opposite Uranus on that day. It's just a really interesting day because when the moon is in the sign of Scorpio, it's powerfully emotional and incredibly deep. We've had a lot of triggers, everybody. I don't know anybody who hasn't had something going on this year that has just been sitting dormant since childhood or whatever, and it's coming to the surface because of what we're experiencing. We're all experiencing what's going on in the world in our own way. When the moon is in Scorpio, once a month, it stirs that up and brings it to the surface. So we have an opportunity here to approach it, address it, you know, open things up so we can heal and then move forward. Again, waxing lunar phase, but by the time we get to early in the morning on Friday, the 11th of December, the opportunity here is to really go deep. Balsamic lunar phase is about finishing up. I mean, really finishing up, not even like I mentioned for Monday and Tuesday in Virgo. This is Scorpio, which is very 
receptive energy as water. We have this opportunity to take things that have been very difficult and very hard in our lives. Again, especially the thing that's near the surface. And in that balsamic lunar phase, we have this opportunity to finally finish the job, finish this health, this, this healing process. And it's an emotional thing, this healing process that we've been working on probably through the whole year, just because of our extreme circumstances in the world right now. So take this opportunity, which is Friday, Saturday, and even into Sunday, um, while we're in the balsamic lunar phase, <clears throat> excuse me, and release, work on it. How do you do that? Sh shamanic practices work really well with Scorpio energy, but you don't have to be a shaman or hire a shaman. You can just find some music, but do what you feel comfortable with. Do what you feel safe with. I mean, don't do this if you're really fragile and it's just, it's just too much. But find a person to talk to, write things out, process. This is, I know it's, it's, we're coming to holidays. We're in Hanukkah now as well. But this is an opportunity to really heal some old wounds and pull that out so you don't have to deal with it again. This is what we get to do. And why do we want to do this? Because we have this eclipse coming up on Monday, the 14th. Because Jupiter and Saturn are entering the, um, the conjunction into Aquarius. Haven't done that. And you've all heard 400 years or so. It's just been and another special thing. I forgot to put this in the written forecast, but I'll tell you here since you've stayed so long. Jupiter and Saturn are actually parallel, completely, exactly parallel on December 13th. So they're in the same place in the sky. This is by declination. It's just like how they are, where the ecliptic is and whether they're north or south of it. They're going to be really close to each other. You can see them right now. They're like this in the sky. But by declination, they, they can be like that. And then when they get to the zodiac and declination in December, they're going to be all in the same place. It's going to be pretty cool to see. And they're nearing, the sun is getting much closer to where they are. So that means that pretty soon we're not going to be able to see them. But right now we can still see them through most of December. I believe we're going to be able to see them just after sunset, right about 30, 45 minutes after sunset. Anyways, I'm, I'm off on something else here. Jeez, look at that. Darn it. I didn't want to do that, but I did. It's fun. The reason I went off on that is because I just want to make sure you understand until we get to that, that is a new age. We are entering a new age. It's not like flipping a switch. It's going to take a while for us to really realize and see what's what we're going to build. But in the meantime, until we get to the eclipse on the 14th, I want you to release as much as you can. Let go of as much as you can. F again, find someone that can help you with meditation if you're not good at it. Prayer, meditation, shamanic journeying, writing things down, burning it. You know, all of those things. Lots and lots of rituals around letting things go, cutting cords, releasing. Keep doing it. Keep doing it from the time you see this until we get to that new moon eclipse on the 14th. And I'll be back in just a few days to give you more information about that and what I've already just touched on with the Aquarius energy. And um, come find me here. Come find me on Patreon too, guys. I do um, a lot. I do six a month forecasts live. You guys get to talk. We get to talk. It's live interactions. So you go a lot deeper than what I'm doing here. And that's a great way to learn. I'm going to leave you with that. Blessings. Namaste.